I was asking questions about um, how people had to sit during that basic wrap in the morning. Um, and I just thought of one thing I, w I just want to be clear about. As they was the first phase patients were sitting there, they didn't have a wallet. That's correct. They were prohibited from having a wallet. That's correct. They had no identification of any kind on them, did they? That's correct. They had were prohibited from wearing a watch, were they not? That's correct. And they were prohibited from having any money on in their That's pockets. That's correct. Okay. And I think you testified that the rule was that they had to have their feet on the floor. Yes. And they had... Um, And I was asking you about something else, just besides feet on the floor, as we broke. Do you recall what that was? Yes, I do, about uh, their having to have their hands in view. I yes, said they generally had that was the requirement. They had to have their hands in plain view. Is that correct? That's correct. And there was also a rule that they had to pay attention to the person that was talking. Is That's that correct? Right. And if a person next to them thought that their feet were not on the floor or that their hands were not in plain view or that they weren't paying attention to the person who was talking, it was appropriate for that person to tap them on the shoulder, as you said, and let them know they weren't doing the right thing. That's correct. And the person who did the tapping could be another patient on first phase in the program. That's correct. And presumably that's a person that was there because of their out of control behavior. That's correct. Okay. Um, at the end, at 1030, when basic wraps, when that first wrap ended, what happened next? Um, generally, the uh, kids would sing uh, songs uh, between the raps, the group would, and there would be a change in whoever was actually leading it, and then they would begin morning rap. Okay. The songs that they sang, the songs I take it were songs um, that were considered by the staff to be appropriate without regard to who selected them. That's correct. It wasn't going to be some currently popular rock song, would it, was it? Oh, if it encouraged sexual promiscuity, drug use, any of that kind of stuff, violence, no, it was not going to be sung. Okay. And after that song was sung, or a couple of songs were sung, morning rap again? Yes. Um, and how was morning rap different from basics rap? Uh, basics rap was more didactic. They were talking about the meaning of the self-help tools. Those as you call them, slogans or steps on the wall, which mm -hmm. are really from the 12 step groups. Mm -hmm. It was a modified version of that. Mm -hmm. And they usually discuss those mm -hmm. uh, in terms of um, those as principles for the recovery process mm -hmm. with some person relating to it. Morning wrap, they began to do more serious work on themselves, on their past, on changes they were making in their lives, and so on. Okay. And when you say they began to do more serious work, let me just go back and make sure we're on the same page with respect to terms. Mm -hmm. What you're calling a wrap would be fairly characterized as group therapy. As group therapy, that's correct. Okay. And in this group therapy process, uh, they're still in this room with lots of people. Depends. Could be as many as 50 people. Could be. Could be more. Maybe uh, at the height of the program size, but it okay. could be significantly less also. All right. And they are uh, motivating in order to be called on. That's correct. They don't get they don't, you don't get to speak in this group therapy session unless you've, A, motivated, and B, been called on. Yeah, I would say that that's what normally happens in group therapy, not necessarily motivation, but being called upon. In fact, when we looked at the film of motivation, those were people hoping that they would be motivating enough to be recognized and called upon. Is most that of correct? Them, most of them. If you really look carefully at the group, there were some whose motivation was such they were kind of hiding beside somebody else because there's something they needed to talk about that they didn't particularly want to. So it was not quite so automatic as that. Right. And there's at least one person, and we'll probably come back to that later, who's sitting there doing nothing, and we'll That's talk correct. about the consequences. I'll ask you about the consequences of that. Mm -hmm. um, but in this morning rep session, people would get called on? Presumably? Yes, presumably. And they would provide experiences from their own life? Yes. And presumably they would talk about experiences in their own life that led to their arrival at kids? Uh, I, I don't think that's the focus, lead to their arrival. Would well, they talk about the things they had done wrong? To get in trouble, yeah. Okay. To mess their lives up, yeah. The point and is getting a coherent and rational understanding of how you messed up your life. And other kids would react to that? Sometimes, sometimes not. Most of the time, kids would simply relate to the rap topic, and most of the time, nobody else would relate to that. It was only if they were being... Let me interrupt you. When you okay. say relate to the rap topic, what you mean is 
a patient would get up and talk about his own life. Mm -hmm. Is that right? That's correct. And other patients would then do the same thing? That's correct. And they would all do that until morning ramp was over? That's Is that correct. correct? And morning ramp again, the people in the front stools were former patients in the program? They were milieu th therapists. That's Mil correct. Milieu therapists? Yeah. I, okay. Counselor, yeah, they, 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 they were people who had the problem and been through treatment. Okay. Peer were, counselors? Uh, yeah, peer counselors, that's right. All right. Um, with no educational requirement other than that they'd been graduates of kids and had been through your training program. That's correct. Okay. Um, and presumably there was a clinical staff member in the back. Uh, or several. Or several who would intervene if something went wrong. No, not if something went wrong. I think you're really badly understating that. They would intervene if somebody started to do some serious work. Incident came up they were having feelings about or they needed to do some work on something, they would intervene. Their purpose there was to therapeutically help the young people make progress in dealing with their problem. And when you say do some work, what you're talking about is sort of get down to the, to the essence of what it was that they did wrong and got them into trouble and brought them to kids? Maybe, but it might also be helping them get the right insight about what the experience they've mm -hmm. been through meant or what they needed to do to not feel guilty about it anymore or to take constructive steps to uh, improve in that area of their life, a whole variety of things. And just so we're clear, the people that we're talking about that were the clinical staff people who would do this intervention in 1984 or 1985 were the people you've told us about previously. You, yes. Yep. You, Mrs. Newton, Jeffrey Stallings, mm -hmm. and Mr. Ripitowski. Yeah. Okay. Later it included other people like June Hio, much, much later, yeah. Peter Burke. Yeah. Tony Kazakowicz. Yeah. Of that group, I think the only one who was a full, well, Peter Burke was not a full clinical staff member. He was a trainee mm -hmm. because he did, didn't have a college degree. Okay. And at times, incidentally, a uh, program psychiatrist would be on the back row if they didn't have a full load of patients to see or evaluate or see. And mm -hmm. I know that several of them actually did work with kids in group. Over, over time. Sure. Um, at the end of this morning wrap, mm -hmm. uh, what time would it be? Quarter of 12, 12, sometime in that range. Okay. What would happen then? Um, it was lunchtime, and what they would do is um, I think that the kids would go to the bathroom first. Um, uh, there were two different ways that lunch occurred, depending on which facility we're in and which time period. Either old comers came out and distributed trays uh, to the kids in group, or uh, they would go through a line, you know, by a window by the kitchen and pick up their own tray with old comers supervising them. And a whole variety of things happened at, at lunchtime. Sometimes they would just have a fun period where they would tell jokes or play <coughs> games, you know, in a group while they were eating lunch. Sometimes they would take care of things they needed to talk about that hadn't fit, the rep topic hadn't fit for the last couple of days. Sometimes they would take care of wrongs, that is rules they'd broken and all that they needed to own up to and clear up. And so just a whole variety of kinds of things would take place during the lunch hour. They didn't get to talk to other newcomers without the supervision of an old comer, did That's they? That's correct. That was a rule that applied at all times. Okay. After lunch, they went to another one of these rap sessions? Um, after lunch, they broke up into two groups most days, uh, girls rap and guys rap. Okay. And so there were only male uh, group leaders and guys rap and only female and girls rap. Okay. And now they could talk about some sexual stuff that they couldn't talk about in the mixed yeah, group. Yeah, things that were inappropriate to talk about in the mixed group. And other than that, it was pretty much the same as the other two raps in terms of its yes. format at least. That's correct. And how long did that go on for? <sighs> I think someplace uh, like 45 minutes to an hour. Okay. 